Hello and welcome to Climbing Daily. Uh, we're here in the Vauxhall Climbing Wall and we've been shooting a training series all day with Catalyst, but I couldn't let Neil go without talking about your E9 because we met in Italy recently, we chatted about it, but I didn't get you on film. So you've just done a new E9, having spent quite a long time away from hard trad. That's right. Just tell me a bit about this route. Well, I've been sport climbing pretty intensively for the last four years and I just needed a break, um, physically and psychologically, I just needed a new view. I mean, it, it, you know what it's like when you go to Malham and Kionzi, they're amazing crags, but often you're queuing for routes, you're doing the same old moves, you can get quite tunnel vision with it. And living in the Lake District, as I do, I wanted to just get out there and just, just see a new view, have some adventures. And had, had you seen this line before? Was it a crag you visited a lot? Well, the crag was top of my list. I mean, Dove Crag, for those people who don't know it, is, it's very unique. I mean, it's rather like something like Dinas Cromlech in Wales, which everyone knows. Imagine that just like toppling over by sort of 20, 30 degrees. It's, it's a 45 metre, like very overhanging crag, generally quite well protected. But the, 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 the routes are given French grades as well as trad grades, which really kind of spurs you on. Um, and, but the warm-ups, like the easiest route on the crags, are like E5. So they're like French 7A, 7A plus on, on spaced gear. And I, I just wanted to go up there and just take the classics and work my way through the grades. And, and the thing was, I, I went up there and sure enough, straight away spotted that there was this kind of gap in the middle of the crag. Like the routes kind of came in from either side but there was this kind of little cave, it's almost like a recess, that nobody, no, no one had climbed up, and I just thought, well, it's crumbs, somebody, someone's got to have a look, you know, someone's got to do that. So I just took a look on Abseil and, and went from there. So your route's called Fearless, yeah. all right? And it's, there was a route above it, and yours is the direct into this, this old route. So there's an amazing James McAfee E8 called Fear of Failure that comes in diagonally from the side, and I basically sort of climbed up into it. I mean, my route's only adding sort of 50 feet of new climbing, but the bottom of the crag is the kind of steepest, blankest, you know, kind of toughest part of the crag. So really it's a, it's a direct line up the middle of the crag, finishing up this, this E8 of, of calves. And how serious is that bottom section in, in terms of difficulty and, and danger? Um, it's, yeah, I mean, you don't want to fall off it. There's, a, there's an easy bit up to a ledge, mm -hmm. and you put some gear there, and then there's a, overhanging but sort of t like 10 move sequence on side pulls a bit compressy and like dynamic and if you fall off that you're going to basically hit this ledge and then you're going to bounce down the sort of lower part it's going to be a, a pretty nasty fall so I, I don't know I mean it, it, it adds a significant section to this route that's already EA and I felt it was probably enough to bump the grade up um, and then, of course, you get into the E8, which is actually, as far as E8s go, it's relatively well protected. But, but you've still got to climb it. But you've got to climb it, and it's very physical. It's like 70 plus, pumpy as hell, and you've got to hang around fiddling in gear. So you could very easily do the necky new start uh, and then fall off the, yeah. the, the E8 bit, and then you'd have to do the start again, which wouldn't be ideal. So you, you, sort of, you were known for hard trad routes, and then you moved away into sport routes. Why did you move away from that like really necky roots in the first place. It was all slightly going in the wrong direction. I was just pushing it harder and harder and I didn't really have an off switch. You know, I climbed E9 and then wanted to climb E10 mm -hmm. and, and did. And when I, I did Equilibrium in 2003 um, and it was so close to the edge for me and I thought if I push it any harder than that, I could really, you know, it just, it wouldn't be ideal and, and, and also, I don't know, maybe things like I, I got married around about that time and my priorities changed a little bit. Also, I, I, I wanted to just drop it back a bit. I didn't stop trad climbing, but I just didn't push it that hard. And yeah. I, I went adventuring, went on trips, you know, went on expeditions and just got into a whole variety of different styles. But, but going into the sport climbing scene, that must have improved your overall strength. So now coming back That's to it. these routes, do you suddenly feel, are you like, oh, I can, I can climb 7C? That's okay. totally it. I mean, I've had a massive surge of my sport climbing that I never thought I would have. Um, it was all thanks to Gaz Parry, who was teasing me because I hadn't climbed 8C when I turned 40. <laughs> and he gave me a bit of a poke about it. And so I went and got my act together and, and I, I, I learned a whole bunch of new stuff, in particular about nutrition. But I refined my whole game. I started doing some you know, different stuff on the fingerboard, different antagonist training. You know, every single aspect of my game I just tweaked up, but in particular it was the nutrition. And I, you know, I ended up not only climbing HC, but doing a, a, a new HC plus at Malham and 
and, and felt like physically like, like I was climbing way better than I was in my, when I was sport climbing in my 20s. And so, yeah, you're right. To come back to trad when you feel in good shape is... Trad is like, if you feel, if you feel fit and confident physically, then you're going to feel confident mentally. Mm -hmm. Um, and, it, and to a large extent, it's like riding a bike. If you've done a load of, if you, I mean, it, it was such a long time ago for me, but because I'd spent so much time putting in gear in my past, yeah. you could just get straight back. Was there a moment when you were like fiddling in the smallest bit of gear? You're like, why? Like, why? Well, <laughs> why I, am I back well, here? I didn't get straight on this E9. Okay. I mean, I went out with a, a, a friend um, locally from Kendall, and you know, I did a did an E6, did an E7. You know, just just got my hand back in, and, and then went for the big one. Yeah. Are we going to see more trad from you, or you, have you put that demon to rest for a bit? Or if you see another line, you're going to be like, Ooh. no, there's 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 no good new lines left in the notes to do. <laughs> that is a big claim. Honestly. Wow. Okay. No, don't right. don't anybody bother looking. Yeah. Someone will comment. We'll be fine. Um, Cool, so future plans for you, I mean, are, you, are we going to be, have you got any sport climbing projects? You've been deep water soloing, haven't you? Uh, I've just put up a load of deep water soloing in a quarry in the Lake District, would you believe? Okay, it's so a um, landlocked Yeah, landlocked soloing. quarry, okay. it's above really deep water. These routes are great fun, they're sort of 30 to 40 feet high uh, on, on pretty good rock after it's been cleaned and yeah, I've just been enjoying that really. And working for Catalyst now and sort of starting this training thing as well. Yeah, doing some stuff with Catalyst, um, it's work that I do for uh, my sponsors, La Sportiva, Osprey and Petzl. Yeah, a whole bunch of stuff really. Cool. Well mate, mass congratulations on the night. it was so cool to see that and uh, best of luck for the future projects. Hey, thanks very much. Cheers.